Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us on another episode of the Coffee with Coaches podcast. I'll go ahead and take a sip just to make it. I'm your host, Kevin Stafford, caffeinating as we speak. And today I have with me Scott Flansberg. And I'm just going to pull from his Wikipedia page, if that gives you any idea of who we're talking to today. Scott is an American dubbed the human calculator and listed in the Guinness Book of World Records for speed of mental calculation. He is the annual host and ambassador for the National Counting Bee, a math educator and media personality. He has published books, Math Magic, and Math Magic for Your Kids. Scott Flansberg, welcome to the podcast. Is that a, is that, does that cover the good stuff? I mean, I know there's obviously a whole Wikipedia article about you, but that's the first paragraph. What do you think of that? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, that's good to know. I, well, you know, the, my book, Math Magic, was a bestseller. So that was sort of cool. My first book ever. And that was way back in 1992 and is still in, is, is in bookstores around the world. So that makes my day because numbers are timeless. And if your methods or techniques work, then they'll stand the test of time as well. So it's sort of cool to see them last that long and people still incorporate them into classes and stuff. It's, I, I love it. It's, it's one of those things that comes to matter to you even more as you get older is your legacy, you know, what you've left behind, what you've, what you've provided for others, what service you've provided. And to see, you know, that you have a, a foundational educational book that's, you know, been not only popular, but like useful in classrooms and for people across the world for decades. I don't know. I like it. It's, I like it a lot. It, it's, <laughs> it, it's, hum, it's humbling. You know, when you start doing something like that, you're not thinking about that. And even when you're in the middle of it, it's, it's tough to recognize the, the perspective that allow you to see it that way. So I am trying to always be in the moment. I just love what I do so much. I just know if I give my best in each moment and try to be the best human I can be, that we'll just see what happens the next day, you know? And so I started out as the human calculator and it was all about numbers and mental math. And it's really driven my life, you know, to, to get this message out there about numeracy. But the last 10, 15 years, almost 20 now, it's really been more about becoming a better human. And I try to just be a better person, you know, because we need kindness in the world. And what little bit we think we can contribute is really, that's what it's going to take. It's just a little bit from everybody all the time. So it's just, it's so humbling when you realize, hey, I got a great opportunity. I love what I do. I get great stages and platforms around the world. But at the end of the day, I just need to be uh, the best human I can be. I love that. I love that dichotomy where it's like at the beginning, it was more about the calculator and the human calculator. And as you progressed, it's become much more about the human. Well, and I, and I got away with being a worse human because I just figured it was all about the numbers. And hey, if I'm killing it there, so people just deal with whatever else there is. And then when I said, hey, I got to focus on being a better human. And it just made the other part even easier. So when I meet kids, it's not about making them feel like a human calculator as much as I just wake them up to being a better human and also being good with numbers. I love it. Well, let me roll into like my first official question. I feel like we can go back and forth for, for hours on this kind of stuff. But would love to know what got you into coaching, the coaching side of this? What prompted you to start a business that allows you to distribute and propagate your, your gifts and your techniques to the world? Just by demand, listening to people, responding to emails and seeing on social media that there was a need and a demand for it. And other than the curriculum that you find in schools, it's hard to figure out what is, what is that other supplemental curriculum that parents need to choose to use to incorporate into their kid's life. And so when I realized there was a big gap there and that mental math is going away, especially with everybody having a calculator in their pocket now, the sense of urgency is tough for every day to sell mental math programs. But at the same time, I believe numeracy not only empowers us with the most powerful language on the planet Earth, but more importantly, it, ex it builds our self-esteem and confidence. When kids overcome that fear, which is usually, their biggest fear is usually numbers and arithmetic if it's not public speaking, and if you can help that student or child overcome their, their biggest fear, it sort of takes the blinders off. Now they're like, hey, what else can I do that I didn't think I could do? Because now I got numbers. What else is there? So I hope it changes their attitude. I love that. It's so, it's so much about empowerment, just awakening them to the world of possibility that they have just inherent inside them. It's really obviously the tools that we use to move through the world are important, but realizing that we have so much of what we need in ourselves already. I mean, if you can instill that, inspiration in someone that realization in someone at a young age i mean you've you've taken the ceiling off of what they can do in their life and that's that's beautiful it's magical well and now there's more technology than ever we have zero excuses why we can't reach children with this message mm -hmm. so let me ask i just did 
Go ahead. No, after you, Kevin. <laughs> I was just going to say, obviously, the entire premise of your coaching business is fairly unique, but do you have anything that's that's relatively unique, at least in your experience, about how you go about reaching your your ideal clients, the people who who could most benefit from from your techniques? Do you have anything like that you see as unique or special, especially compared to other coaching programs? Yeah, we've created an event that not only promotes numeracy, but it allows, you know, direct marketing in a way, because the event is called the National Counting Bee. So it's just like the spelling bee. And if you want your kids to be able to compete in the spelling bee, they got to learn how to read and spell. And if they want to be in the counting bee, they're gonna have to learn how to understand numbers and add and subtract and do basic arithmetic. And so the count annual, it's an annual event, a STEM event, and a counting bee can be done in any family, any classroom or organization, any county, any state, any country, and find the fastest human calculators in each age group and bring them up on stage and let them go at each other, count by bigger numbers, and let's see who wins. And it's a simple counting contest. I'll give you one example. Is that all right, Kevin? Oh, of course. Okay. Start at seven and count by three. Seven, 10, 13, 16, 19, 22, 25, 28, 31. I keep tripping over the 10. Excellent though, but you got it. You're doing it. And that's all it is. That's a counting beat. So you walk up on stage, everybody's going to count by three, but you get a random starting number and you got to go. You got 15 seconds to get as many answers as you can. Then the next student gets up there. They might have to start at 13 and count by three or, or whatever, a random number. And just to make it uh, where they can't memorize it. And then the next round, you got 15 seconds to count by four and then five and six and seven. And we just keep going until we find the fastest human calculator. So it's a simple counting contest that really is a diagnostic tool for parents and teachers because some students can count by three, no problem. But what if you have to start at seven? Good point. I'm think one thing I noticed immediately just in that counting by threes is I, it almost felt like working on a muscle that I hadn't used for very long. I, I could feel like uh, it's almost rusty where I'm just like, oh, how long has it been since I've counted more than a couple of numbers in a row? And like, I could feel like I noticed immediately that I was tripping over the, every 10 in the, in the list. And I was like, Oh, and it was, it was almost, I immediately, I could see it as a tool for almost like, like neurofeedback where I was realizing where my brain was pausing a little bit. And I was like, Oh, I could use this. I could think about this. That was, and that was just one part of it just in this conversation right here. So that's, I love this. If we'd have had your brain attached to uh, a reading if you could get a reading on the activities, you would have seen, like you just said, that there's a muscle up there that's an atrophy, that it's just we don't choose to use it because we don't ask those types of questions. Because kids learn to count by three and they can just bust out three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18 as fast. But you say start at seven and count by three and they're like, you know, and so it's a whole different skill set. But this promotes numeracy and is a diagnostic. So if your kids can't do this, it shows you the gaps. And that's where I come in. I develop programs to help people go from zero to numeracy. Let's talk about what comes next. I love this. I love this national counting bee. It's like, say, I'm obviously we've, we've all just come through a pretty, pretty tumultuous 18 months or so, and we still have more tumult ahead, of course, but clearly your coaching practice is robust right now and you're reaching thousands of people. Um, what do you have? What do you have coming up? If, if there's anything that you could reveal, what do you have in the next like 12 months or 18 months or so that you have? coming up in your coaching business, a new event, a different program, perhaps another book. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's funny. Thanks for even asking. I literally just filmed it yesterday and submitted it to my team. They'll have it up on the site uh, on 9-9, September 9th. And I'm all about the number nine. I'm mm -hmm. on a mission to reach every student on the planet Earth about a pattern about the number nine. What do you think about the number nine? Oh, it's the last single digit number is the first thing that comes to my mind. I'm not sure why. <laughs> it's an interesting, it's an interesting number to say out loud, just as a single syllable, nine. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, you're muted. So I, I discovered a pattern about the number nine. I want to share with you. Just take one minute. Okay. Huh? You already started it by saying that nine is the biggest single digit. And now here's the secret to numbers is every number higher than nine has a pattern make Back down, example, if I shoot it on the number 11. Oh, I'm sorry, your audio is breaking up. You just write, so think about the number 11. Okay. Write down the number 11. And now add those digits together. What's one plus one? Two. You get two, right? And then subtract that. What's 11 take away two? Nine. Hmm, look at that. Every number in the universe goes back to nine. So now write down a number higher than nine. Let's write down 10. 
And now add the two digits together, one, zero. One to zero adds up to one. 10, take away one, equals nine. All right. This works for every number from 10 to infinity. So let's try 12. Write down 12, one, two. One plus two adds up to three. Hmm. 12 take away three equals nine. So now you pick a number and I'll do it for you. Let's, let's go up a little bit. Let's do 57. All right. So five plus seven equals 12. Take away 12 equals 45. That's plus five equals nine. That's right. And the number 45, four plus five equals nine. Interesting. That's such a fascinating. Works for every number. So I, yeah, isn't it? It's fascinating. So just for fun, try it. Write everybody listening. Just write down your age. Just think of your age. If Don't you can do it in your loud. head. Don't say it out and loud. Now, <laughs> and now, <laughs> right. And now add those two digits together and put that total underneath your age and then subtract. So if you wrote down 40, four plus zero is four. 40 minus four is 36. Three and six is nine. This works for every number. And it's a simple exercise that will train our brains to understand all our base, basic math facts. So now, instead of you memorizing five plus five is 10, think of the number 55. That number teaches you five plus five. You know it's 10, but now you can check it. What's 55 take away 10? You'll get 45. And that answer, if it adds up to nine, means that everything is fine, that you did it the right way and that the answer is correct. The thing that I'm loving about this entire exercise and what I've in my in my better moments have always found the most fascinating about math is how how much play there is like joyful play like just doing this exercise right here. I'm I mean, I don't know if this makes me, you know, a bit of a, a bit of a nerd, but I'm having a blast like I'm I'm genuinely tickled by this prospect. And there is like in, thank you in, in, in constructs like this in math. It gets, a, I think, a bad, a very bad reputation for being very dry, very logical, very boring, very unentertaining. But what I think a lot of people don't realize is how much fun this can actually be. <laughs> well, imagine if you're in the car with your kids and their kids are over seven years old, maybe eight, nine, ten, whatever. And you're driving by a sign and the speed limit sign is 65. If your kids can't say to you, mom, dad, six plus five is 11. 65 take away 11 is 54. Fun four adds up to nine. I love it. I love it. Okay, we're going a little long already. I'm, I'm clearly, I could do this for a while with you. This is, this, is so, this is so fascinating and so much fun. We know about the National Coaching Bee. I believe your website is Scott, is it just scottflansberg.com? You just have your name.com? Sberg.com, humancalculator.com. And the Counting Bee is a free event and that's at thecountingbee.org. That is lovely. Scott, do you have anything else to add? I'm no, sure I do. just appreciate the time and I appreciate I appreciate your news about the number nine. It's my mission is to reach every student on planet Earth before they're nine years old. So when they're nine, every number they see that whole year will go back to their age, the number nine, and it'll make them feel like every number is their best friend. And then when they'll wake up at 10 years old, they'll be fluent with numbers and basic arithmetic and be able to move on and move into higher levels of arithmetic and math. But right now, a lot of kids crumble in algebra because they don't really have a foundation of number sense. I feel like, just to, to, to make a slight off-color joke, I feel like it's usually in the teen years that you begin to believe that you're the center of the world. But I think, it's, I think in this way, it's much smarter to start it early and start it smartly and let them realize that their, their age, their, their age of nine, their nine-year-old nine year is very powerful and they can begin to realize that maybe they are the center of the world in a certain way maybe a little more positive than when i thought i was the center of the universe at 15. <laughs> yeah that's a, a well said because you know foundation is called the I count foundation and we use number sense and mental math and helping kids overcome math anxiety to increase their self-esteem hence i count you know so they can count numerically but also they feel like they count so i appreciate that very much i love this scott Thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Thank you to everybody listening and we'll see you soon.